that what we see on our Portland street, City on Council our Commissioner Joanne Hardesty calls the crisis on our streets misery. And my biggest fear is that it's only going to get worse in January. So Portlanders across the board believe there needs to be change in the city's response to this crisis. What in your eyes isn't working with how the city responds? What would you do differently if reelected and why haven't you done it already? Well, let me just say I've never had the Housing Bureau in my portfolio. I don't supervise the Joint Office of Houseless Services. Uh, but what I would do, what, what I think should happen differently, um, because of my leadership, Commissioner Dan Vine is in a position to renegotiate the intergovernmental agreement with the next Multnomah County chairperson. If I was a queen of the universe for a day and had housing, I would immediately, after the November elections, convene a meeting with the next governor, the next county chair, um, and our federal delegation, and I would actually create a work group and say, how are we going to address this issue? Mayor Wheeler's homeless plan to build three large homeless campuses over an 18-month period and ban unsanctioned camping. You said you were disappointed with the lack of details in funding and that it needs to be more urgent. Can you explain your stance on this and what do you propose that they do differently? Well, the mayor wants to take 18 months to develop a plan uh, to get funding and to launch the first uh, whatever he's calling uh, that, uh, those camps. Um, if there's a sense of urgency, and again, uh, what's come in front of us has no dollars attached to it, no plan about how we accomplish it, no sites already pre-selected. So if there's this real sense of urgency, and this is, isn't just a political stunt, we should have much more detail, and we should actually be on a much faster track. One of the amendments that you're suggesting is having the three large camping sites spread across the city, not in just one targeted neighborhood. Do you have any examples of where those could be? Let me just say that I am not supporting 500 person camps anywhere. Um, I, what I know is that normally uh, 40 to 60 people should be the maximum. I think the mayor would find it impossible to find a place where the community would welcome 500 houseless people living together uh, uh, willy-nilly. You say in your three years on council you've accomplished the highly effective Portland Street response that reduces the workload on the Portland Police Bureau. However, those workers are inundated with calls. Last month they received the most amount of calls they ever have and they still have to return some of those calls to the Portland Police Bureau. Yes, as you know, we are still rolling out Portland Street response citywide. On July 1st of last year, of this year in fact, uh, I was authorized to expand Portland Street response citywide. So you're talking about going from four workers to about 70 plus workers, and we're in the process of hiring and training. Um, and again, Portland Street response uh, goal is not to go from call to call to call. It was created so that it could provide care to people where they are, when they need it. If re-elected, she plans to work system-wide to expand Portland Street Response to address the addiction and mental health crisis on our streets. Your opponent in this race calls you the most radical member of City Council on these issues and at times the most passive with respect to addressing unsheltered camps. Not quite sure what my opponent means by that. Um, I'm really clear about my role and my role of making sure that we are taking care of the people in the city of Portland. Um, and that's why I've been focused on trying to remove barriers so that people can live their best lives. If homelessness is someone's number one concern, why should they vote for you? If homelessness is their number one concern, they should vote for me because I'm the only candidate that understands the economic cliff that workers are experiencing. I know what people are seeing who are fortunate enough to have homes is but for grace, but for a paycheck, but for a lost job, there go I. So someone who understands what it's like to be a working person, someone who understands how systems work, and I know we need all of them in order to address our crises on the street, which is houselessness. Commissioner Hardesty also talked of housing the homeless in vacant buildings around the city and allocating $1 billion statewide for affordable housing. You can watch the full interview along with the one we did with Renee Gonzalez on KGW+. And a reminder, Election Day is November 8th. Blair Best, KGW News.